needed it the most. Like everybody else had another place to stay. They didn't have anywhere else to stay. Maggie would have had to gone, gone home at 10 and BJ wouldn't have gone on the bus without her. So, oh. it's like, you know. That's sweet. For who? Bincho? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for saying that. Yeah, I'm not going to leave the homie in the dust, though, you know? Can't do it. She stopped hanging out with me. Why didn't she tell me in the first place? Someone who explained it perfectly is this guy on TikTok. He posted a video, and it was just, he explained, like, he explained, like, he explained everything perfectly. It's a trauma that you have to process, and sometimes you have to process it alone because an entire society is against you as a man. See, and I have watched the video exactly of what happened, the video evidence that I've seen over and over and over again, and you say his hand moves. His hand moves because it falls off of his friend's back. Your hand is on his crotch. It is not on his upper thigh. He was unconscious. You did a bad thing, and I know you're trying to write it in every way you can because of the account that you have and the following that you have and the life that you're currently living, but I need you to just do us all a favor and admit what you did was wrong. I don't care how touchy-feely your relationship was prior to or after that moment, but just know that he did not speak up and not act any different because he knew a society would be against him as it is. And now that everybody's seen the truth, you just attacked in a way that is supposed to be an apology or righting the wrong. What you're doing is manipulating right now. Any sane person knows that they wouldn't have to go on multiple platforms to post something like this, and they wouldn't be getting angry in the videos that are supposed to be addressing and apologizing. I know you've got a lot to lose, and I know you've got a lot to live for, but here's the truth. You getting worked up because people are trying to get the truth out of you does not make it right to get shitty in a video. Just know that the truth will prevail, and your bullshit lies will come out. I think his video was one of the reasons why I was um, okay and was able to not come out with like an aggressive statement like her. I was able just to... I knew the truth. I knew what she did to me. She and I met four years ago in high school. She was dating my big friend. Um, and basically, it did not turn out well. She cheated on him two times. And it kind of, like, created this whole problem in her friend group. I'm the type of guy that's all for, like, second chance. And I, I always try to see the good people. I was in the hype house. I was going back and forth from L.A. And Sienna had just gone viral. He reached out to me and basically asked if I want to do an interview with her in LA. And I said, of course. We hung out, reconnected. Um, I showed her around the hype house, and she just all my friends. And um, I was happy for her. And we just had fun hanging out. I just want to clarify that we both knew that we were just friends. She was seeing and talking to other guys in LA all the time. And I, I just thought of her as a good friend. We were making videos, we were making dance trends, we had fun. It was just strictly friends and we both knew that. At this point, nothing inappropriate was happening between us. We were just friends, everything was fine. This next part of the video is very difficult for me to talk about. I've been wanting to talk about it for a long time. So the first incident where Sienna crossed boundaries is after filming, we went to the room um, I was just chilling on my phone on the bed, and she got naked, like completely naked, nothing on, and straddled me when I was literally just chilling on the bed. But I didn't know what to do in like the situation because it was just, like random and weird. Quickly told her, "Sienna, get off. We're just friends. Stop. They're trying to make out with me. They're like just doing a bunch of things to me." And I was, I kept on saying, "Sienna, stop." get off. I, I, like, I didn't want to like be like aggressive. I don't want to hurt her, you know? So I, I pulled her off of me and it took like a couple tries because I didn't want to be like too rough. And I went out of the room and that was like the end of it. The next morning where she was like, I'm so sorry for doing that. It was, I, I don't know what went through my head. I had to clarify again that I didn't like her that way. We we're just friends. She said sorry, that was it. After that, these type of things kept happening. She would do something, and I would forgive her, and she said it wouldn't happen again, and we'd go on and making fun of 
videos, after all those type of things kept on happening, the Hawaii incident happened where I was passed out unconscious almost like the whole night. She got on top of me, took advantage of me, broke to me. I'm, I'm so glad they pulled her off of me. And honestly, I'm glad that they have evidence. After she had found out about the video, she said sorry. She said if this got out, she would be done. That it's horrible and she's working on boundaries and she was seeking therapy. Um, and shortly after there was a party, I was taking pictures with a couple other girls. We took a picture, Sienna came in, started screaming at me, got mad at the girls, told me to come to her room to talk to me. She started screaming at me and I was like, Sienna, there's no reason for you to be mad when you're getting with other guys in LA. I can't just take a simple picture with a couple girls. That's when she pulled me in and grabbed me and tried to make out with me. And I got pissed and told her to leave. I want to stay at the party and she kind of had already been yelling at every single person at the party. So Tim Reynolds wanted to take her home and while the car was moving, she jumped out of the car, rolled and said I had to get back to Jack. So I ran back to the house and I was like hiding from her. Waiting for her parents to finally pick her up. Looking back now, I don't know why. I stayed friends with her. We stayed around her. So I truly thought she was gonna change for some reason. I feel like she she say she had so much love for me and she truly cared for me. And then the next night she would do something like that. But she knew I had those boundaries. So when I was at my most like vulnerable state, like when I was arguing, getting getting heated, or when I was asleep or passed out, that's when she would take advantage of me because she knew I was in my most vulnerable state. When I'm awake, I hated it. I hated that touch. I hated any intimacy with her because I knew we were just friends. I didn't want that from her. And especially with, like, the past couple things she did, I, wouldn't, I didn't want nothing, to, I didn't want anything to do with that. Over the next couple of months, I was stuck in this toxic cycle. I was stuck with her crying to all my friends saying that I didn't like her back and why don't I like her back and she would get mad at me for not caring about her as much as she she cared about for me but she'd also be doing these things to me and would go see other guys in LA so it was like when, when at all I couldn't get out of this she would constantly come to my house remember my door codes it, like it got to the point where I had to like start screaming at her like get out of my house because I was so sick of her just like breaking into my house. I would wake up and see her car just sitting outside at like two in the morning. She would break into my house and when I was sound asleep she'd come to my room and I'd wake up to her hand in my pants and it wasn't like the only time it happened to. I was so like used to it. I was so used to it that it I don't know, it was it was just like normal. I, like, I didn't think there was such like, a problem at all. Like, part of me wants to blame myself for being nice and sticking around after so many, so many times. But now I realize that I was stuck in this like manipulative cycle of her acting like she was trying to care about me. And then that night she would do stuff to me. And it was, it was just so normal for me. I, I got used to it, which sucks. I feel like no one should have to go through. It's weird. I almost felt like I owed owed it to her for some reason. I don't know why. Like I felt like she had this like control, like this power over, over me. It was all I don't know. I was like I was like stuck. Um, and I feel like you should never have to like worry about like falling asleep and waking up to one of your good friends like touching you. You know. I was like terrified for some reason, which you shouldn't be from like a, a, a person. One night she started ripping off my clothes, touching my crotch area, trying to make out with me. I mean, it was just like the same old, same old. Like I'd say, Sienna, stop. Sienna, stop. Go back to the couch. Sienna, stop. So I like locked the door. She was trying to get in and I literally just slept on the floor and she finally went to bed. It's like very awkward the next morning and she'll say sorry, and I'm like, yeah, this, this happens so many times. You do not respect.
respect boundaries. You just... Oh my god. So my dad was born and raised in Hawaii. So we, we planned a trip to the beach house uh, my dad grew up on in Hawaii. And the Sienna's family basically planned the same trip on the same dates. They left a couple days before us and we were supposed to leave on a certain date. But I didn't want to leave because she already left to go back home and I did not want to be at home with her because I know she'd find a way to start hanging out with me again. So my mom got a text from Sienna's mom saying that Sienna is on a plane taxi right now. Hearing that she was coming back, it was like, this cycle is never going to end. It's like, it's going to be like this forever. That's like, that's what it felt like. She was always going to make her way back towards me. She wasn't respecting my space at all. She knew I wanted my space. There's another time I went to Hawaii with a couple friends for like my trip and she kind of found a way to get on that trip. And we went to a party one night. She got mad that I was talking to some girl and she took me into the bathroom to talk to me, saying that she wanted to leave. She was blocking the door, so like, I couldn't just like throw her out of the way. All I had was stop, so, you know, don't do that. If I come out, she will, like scream at me in front of everyone and think that I did something. I mean, just, I feel like no one believes a male, especially in like that type of situation. But yeah, she was on the counter and wrapped her legs around me and sort of like let me out of the bathroom. Yeah, just weird stuff. That night we went home, made sure we had like different rooms to stay in. And I got in the shower and she picked the lock of my door. I made sure to lock the doors, but she picked the lock and walked in. I was in the shower. All I heard was just like the door opening. And that's when I was just done. I screamed at her. Told her to get out. She started crying. She went and slept in my bed. And I went to my friend's trundle bed that was like upstairs. Uh, and that's how like the night ended. So now we're caught up to when everything went public when Mason posted this tweet. Since everything was brought to social media, multiple guys came out to me and said that Sienna did similar things to them. And basically I'm shut up. situation like I 
I've just learned. You learn from it. I've learned so much from everything. I'm like, I've grown so much as a person. It's insane. And as of Sienna, I don't know if she'll ever be sorry. I don't know if she'll ever learn from what she did or if she'll ever admit to what she did. Um, but, and trust me, it, it helps so much. I just wanted to say thank you so much for listening to me and letting me take time and breathe and process everything. And I'm, I'm glad I'm finally ready to tell the world my story. Um, if you're watching right now and you've been through a situation like mine, I just want to say your feelings are valid. Your feelings are valid. Your opinion is valid. I believe you, and I want you to know that you can talk to someone. You can talk to anyone. You can talk to me. Um, but that's how I want to end off. I love you guys. All right, so I find it really hard to, yes, so I find it really hard, okay, to think that this girl, right, can, like, first of all, okay, first of all, what I want to say is, like, I think this dude went through something so fucked up, right, like, he, like, like, what he went through, like, bitches be crazy, like, I, I, I'm, like, that girl seems, like, insane, right? I don't think that the people that, like, the text messages of, like, oh, like, I went through this too, like, I'm right there with you, you know? Like, I find that tough to, to believe, right? Because there's people that will, like, try to hop on, like, trends and stuff and, like, try to, like, be, like, and just try to, like, hop on the trend and, like... try to like hop on the trend you know what I mean um like that that seems a little bit far-fetched right like that's just kind of tough for me to believe right so anyway um I think this dude went through something that nobody should go through you know like that's so fucked like I feel so bad for this dude but um like there's like y you have to realize that like if there's like if this is happening to a certain point and like if, if if everything that he said is like completely true and like he was like feeling these things like he wasn't feeling safe he was scared blah de, blah de, blah it's like this dude has enough money and like has like friends and family enough to a point where he can escape you know like this girl is like of course like LA and Hawaii 